some really flowing water. Oh yeah. It poured rain this morning and yesterday. So the creek is really flowing here today. This is awesome. Nice clean water. Super wet. Oh <laughs> Yeah, there's a really big drop off right there. <laughs> Hi everyone, I am coming up for air today after several days of really working hard inside the truck to get that cabinet finished up, removed, and that area finished up. And I'm gonna show, I'm gonna show you what I went through because it involved, you know, not only the construction, but dealing with the air conditioning unit and the heater unit, uh, getting those removed, getting their supply lines disconnected, basically, and being sure that that's all not gonna be a problem in the future, so. It's time to say goodbye. Get in your supervisor position. I've moved the refrigerator, I've moved the big speaker box, and man, that opens up a lot of space. This uh, speaker box, I don't know, takes up a lot of room. So I've gotta pull this off, the mouse, the O2, some hooks, my trash can holder, disconnect the refrigerator from its um, mounting shelf there and then we can start stripping things apart Look. That is a very compact little heater unit. I, I like that. You can hear the landscaper guys in the background. I apologize. I just picked the wrong day to be doing this. The air conditioning unit. So right here, this, this aluminum block that I'm kind of pointing the camera at, that's where the two lines for the refrigerant attach. So you can see those two uh, hoses that have wire loom over them. Those are the two refrigerant lines. So at least there's enough slack in them that I can kind of wiggle this thing out here like this. I'm just gonna disconnect it and yank it out of here. It's that simple. Same thing for the heater system. I've got to get those hoses to the heater plugged up. So I got to figure that out. But there's one way to figure it out. Make yourself. I want to show everyone. So as part of my understanding of how the air conditioning systems work, tracing the hoses that come from under the engine bay all the way back. These right here, this is one of them. And I don't think you can see the second one but it's right up there you gotta trust me on that this what you're seeing right here this is the union here's the hose that comes back from up front and then this is the hose here that continues on and goes up to the rear air conditioning unit this junction right here is a valve so underneath this black plastic cap let me spin this off so underneath here 
So this reminds me of on the outside of a house when you've got a water spigot and the handle is missing. It's got a square. This is about a quarter inch square. So what I did was I just put, I put a crescent wrench on here. I put a, a large open end wrench on the body of the valve to hold it steady. And by starting with a little bit of pressure and then a little more, it finally cracked and it was, it was all the way open, which I would expect it to be. And so I turned and turned and turned with my crescent wrench right on there. I turned it until now it's all the way closed. It's all the way in and seated. So what I'm doing is basically cutting off the refrigerant that goes to the rear AC unit. So you've got shutoff valves. Uh, just as a side note, these are the shutoff valves for the heat system, for the rear heat, okay? I've got the ceiling fan running in case any of the refrigerant leaks out. Suck it right out of here. How tight is this? Just had a little drip of, uh, I just had a little bit of the liquid come out of one of the hoses. It's got the yellow dye in it and it got on my arm. So that's why I went running in to rinse it off. Cause I don't know if it's uh, an irritant to the skin. So I just wanted to get it rinsed off real quick. Look at all the room. Oh my gosh. That is so much more room. Wow. I'm gonna see if I can use that panel that just came from here to be our new wall. And gotta figure out what we're gonna do up here to get that covered up, get the ceiling cleaned. And then, like I said before, we're going to have to get some kind of flooring put down under here. Stay left. There we go. So this uh, flooring under here is some of the ugliest 1950s, like uh, linoleum kind of stuff. Just terrible. Heater's in great shape, look at that. Just a quick wipe. So this is a good heater unit. I'll clean it all up and then I'm gonna see if I can't sell it to someone. If anyone out there has a need for one of these heater units, let me know. You can see those white blobs there. That's the silicone where I just pumped it up in. So that's full of steel wool filled with silicone. That's going to harden right up. So that's uh, pretty impenetrable as far as mice. So right here, this is actually the old water line for the heater. So you see this union that I put in there? That is a Dorman 5 8 inch heater bypass dual ended barb. So the two heater hoses are just attached together there and in essence uh, bypassing the heater. I 
is going on back here? Just a really awkward working position here. This was all covered uh, this was not seen so they didn't even bother putting a putting a panel up here Okay, I've got the insulation installed up here. I used, uh, this is a two foot by two foot piece. High performance XPS insulation. One inch thick, two foot by two foot. Oh, yeah. Once I cut this thing off, I can put the other wall up. And then, um, it's time to start sticking the Woo! vinyl up. So if you can shine the light right on this area, if you just, yeah, like just like that. Stand as far away as you can. Yeah. See, this thing's magnetic, but everything's aluminum, so it won't uh, stick to aluminum. Yeah. I didn't know aluminum wasn't magnetic. Correct. Let's see that there, countersunk. Yeah. Yeah. It's coming together, sweetheart. Four, one, two, three, four, because then it stops. And then here, anywhere along here. Yeah. Oh, that's funny? I caught that. Yeah, I'm glad <laughs> you think it's funny. Yeah, honey. Are we killing this or killing what? Killing it! Oh, the gun's about to die. Oh, no. Yep. This is the last one on the, on the slant. Let's see if it works. I got it. Woo! Holy moly. She's up there. Big helper. Are you a big helper? Yeah. Guarding the piece of wood I see. That's a good boy. Goodbye. The walls are secured. Now it's time to put the vinyl planking over it and the trim. Tidy it up. But these are repurposed pieces. So I'm really happy I didn't have to buy any wood. Just a single score and then you bend it over. There you go, nice clean cut. been fighting thunderstorms in and out all day so this is taking longer than I'd like but it's coming together okay I just finished it I gotta go get cleaned up it's very very humid out here today here's what we got 
so it probably doesn't look really spectacular on the camera so the vinyl flooring I'm gonna get some quarter round trim tomorrow to fill in that corner but I have some aluminum trim that's gonna go up this edge and it's gonna look really nice so that's tomorrow and get the uh, face plates put on for the two panels there so I'm gonna go get cleaned up and get some lunch and we're gonna call it for the day that was enough for today there were some days where I was battling against thunderstorms it was really uh, just a weather system coming through for a few days we had afternoon thunderstorms so I was closing up the truck and running in the garage and then waiting for the storm to pass and coming back out when it was finished and so several days of getting interrupted by that getting interrupted by the UPS delivery woman Are you hung up? Oh, you're hung up on a box of floor planks. I just picked this up because now that I have that corner done and the walls finished, it looks so good that I have to continue and do these other two walls leading up into the cab. That whole deconstruction, rebuild corner project, it cost me one box of the the floor the vinyl flooring which is $35 for the box I replaced the electrical outlet I don't know five or six dollars and used one of those I didn't have to buy any wood the only wood that I bought was a piece of quarter round for the corner but I reused some of the panels to make the walls knowing that they were going to be covered up by by the vinyl flooring so you know they had a bunch of screw holes in them and so it didn't matter i was able to cover patch those holes so that the vinyl flooring had something to stick to lefty hey do not why are you carrying this around my gorilla glue this is construction adhesive that i use to glue the vinyl planks to the wall the adhesive that's on the back of them is just not strong enough to hold them on a wall it's fine for floor because they're laying on the floor and people are walking on them but the adhesive if you use just the adhesive that's on the back they will fall off the wall ask me how i know that brighten up the camera so i had to buy that piece of cord around there for the back corner and then i stained it it looks okay it's not the exact match but it's good enough but now like i said now i want to do these two walls so this one that goes up and over and then this this wall here so i'm going to put the the planking on those i was able to use some of the existing aluminum trim to edge these they came out really nice i drilled pilot holes for the screws going in these are all little things that i've learned working on the rig that make the construction and assembly of things go a little bit easier now across the top everywhere has these uh, vinyl wrapped wood strips that seal the gap between the walls and the ceiling i have a long section of it it used to be up here i just have to modify it uh, the length isn't correct anymore but i do have enough that i'm gonna be able to run it along there along there and then uh, to fill that gap right there so thank you all for watching the video i really appreciate y'all being here this was a big job it was a lot of work but it was really rewarding obviously this opened up a whole huge area so what am i going to be doing with this area i've got a bunch of people asking me that so i have a new refrigerator that i'm adding i'm retiring the oldest one that i have still works fine uh, i'm just going to store it for now uh, i was given a new refrigerator by a company i'm going to be doing a video on it really soon it's the best refrigerator i've ever had my hands on 
it runs whisper quiet it's built like a tank so watch an upcoming video for that it's going to be going right here i really want to build in some shelves up above obviously this is a lot of unused real estate right here and i do need somewhere to store my clothes still so i'll have the new iceco refrigerator here it's big i'm gonna be carrying even more food now the robson is going to become my freezer and other than that other than the refrigerator and getting some shelves for my clothes that's all i have as far as plans for this for this new area i'm thinking that's probably going to change down the road what this area is perfect for is an upright refrigerator freezer i cannot spend that kind of money if you've looked at upright refrigerator freezers that are 12 volt they are you know twelve hundred dollars and up i i can't do that it would absolutely be perfect for this spot i can picture a refrigerator freezer standing here and looking like it was made for it i can't do that maybe sometime down the road but i just can't do that so what you all can do to help out is watch the videos leave comments give me thumbs up so maybe someday i can get me a big refrigerator freezer and we can all celebrate that together so thank you everyone again for being here and watching the videos i hope you enjoyed this one it was a big job a lot of work Thanks everybody for watching. Everybody take care, be safe, and we'll see y'all again really soon. Okay, I have a car full of action here. We are headed over to the PARK. And, excuse me. And me and the two puppies are gonna have a great week. They, oh my goodness, thank you for that. Kisses! Such good kisses. Okay, heading to the P-A-R-K. <laughs> oh, Oh my God. Lord help me.